Yes, okay. So I want to show my desktop. Um, can you see it? Yes, that's fine. Yes. Is it uh, the full screen or? Well, people can make it full screen. Yes, okay. So uh, before I start with my lecture, I want to thank uh, the responsible of the Regional Furniture Society for giving me the chance to present in my results of my research about the historical development of the chest of drawers. And um, although I would rather be in London and meet you there live, I'm happy that this meeting can take place as an online meeting. And uh, even if it is an online meeting, I think that it's not a matter of course to organize such a meeting in this difficult time. So thank you for that. And um, because English is not my mother tongue, I hope that everything will be understandable and that I have chosen the right uh, translations for the technical terms. So as you can see and know already, the title of my lecture is The Chest of Drawers, A Late Medieval Piece of Furniture. For those who are familiar with historical furniture, this question seems to be a bit strange. A chest of drawer, late Middle Ages, that doesn't seem to fix together. And as, ex uh, and as I have experienced it during my research, you are not the only one who is wondering about this title. So um, I would like to invite you and all the skeptical to leave the traditional knowledge about the historical development of the chest of drawers behind you. And therefore, I want to begin my lecture with a quote by the physician Max Planck, who said, quote, if you can't occasionally think of cautiously wrong things, you will never be able to enrich your science with a new idea, end of the quote. But please don't misunderstand me. I don't want you to think wrong things. And I don't think that Max Planck meant this with the statement too. I think that it is just about that to be open minded and therefore to be able to cross the borders of the established scientific knowledge. Before we will have a closer look at the late medieval period and check if the thesis that chest of drawers could have been existed in their classical shape in that time, we first have to take a brief look at the development of this kind of furniture type at its definition and how it is uh, and how it appears in the scientific publications about historical furniture. In the typology for German museums and collections, which has been published in 2005 in cooperation of numerous museological and scientific institutions, the chest of drawers is defined as a storage furniture with two or more drawers. And it is said that this special type of furniture has been developed in France in the 17th century and that it is not traceable in Germany before 1720. In other dictionaries, for example, this one by John Gloark from 1952, it is said that the chest of drawers has also been introduced in England in the 17th century, but he also says that this is just restricted to the term chest of drawers, which is first detectable in an inventory of the goods of Francis Taverner of Ridley in Essex from 1673. There it is written that in the hall chamber had been, quote, one great chest, one box, and a chest of drawer, end of the quote. Because of the differentiated distinction of this kind of storage furniture, it seems that Francis Taverner of Little really owned a chest of drawers and not a chest with drawers. Unfortunately, there is no further description of this furniture. So we do not know how this chest of drawers looked like, and therefore it has to be stated, as Glock also does, that the typical shape of the chest of drawers, as it is known today with its final form, with two or three long drawers, sometimes in variety with two smaller drawers above, has been perfected during the 18th century. If you look at the different dictionaries and books in which the development of the chest of drawers is complained, you have to be careful of the term. It is often mentioned that the first traceable note of a chest of drawers is given in a letter from 1599 by John Minshew, where he describes, quote, a great chest or standard with drawings, chests or boxes in it, end of the quote. 
but it's a big difference between the two terms chest of drawers or chest with drawers. So maybe Minshew has described a chest with drawers as it is preserved in the Salzburg Cathedral, which is dated to the 1560s. Adolf Pollner, a German art historian who has written one of the first scientific publications about historical furniture in Germany in 1927, says that the chest of drawers is a modern creation which has been established in France about 1700 and get its final form in the late period of Louis XIV. But he also mentioned that the chest of drawers was known in the Netherlands and Britain before 1700 in Italy since the Renaissance and in Germany since the late Gothic period. In relation to the term commode, which is used in Germany and France for this furniture, Holner recurs to a letter by Elizabeth Charlotte, Princess of the Palatinate and Duchess of Orleans, who is famous for her tremendous amounts of letters, which she has written during her stirring, staying at the Palace of Versailles. In a letter from March 24 in 1718, she writes that a commode was given as a present to her daughter. She describes that type of furniture as a big table with big drawers. Maybe the chest of drawers, uh, which she described, looked like that one in the collection of the Germanisches Nationalmuseum in Nuremberg, which is connected to the Palatinate because of its provenance. With its high feet, it could remind to a table, but it also has the big drawers. In relation to the term commode, Boyna made another interesting statement. In his opinion, the Italian cassettoni, which he dates around 1600, have also been designated as a chest of drawers if you follow the modern use of this term because of its profane using in a developed culture with its new needs. That is interesting, and that is interesting because in relation to the term, he doesn't only argue with the shape or the construction of the furniture, but with its function. In my opinion, this is really open-minded and much more far-sighted handling opposite to Heinrich Kreisel, who was one of the most famous researchers about historical furniture in Germany in the 1970s. About the chest of drawers, he restricts his statement that they are a type of furniture which appears in the Baroque period and has been developed in France and that they cannot be found in Germany before the 1720s. For me, it seems that he is focused more on the term commode, and therefore he may be right. But it also shows that it can be dangerous to look just onto the term, and that this does not mirror the real development of this kind of furniture. The same thing happened in the typology for museums and collections, which I mentioned first. There, the development also seems to be restricted more to the term and not to the furniture and its different types of shapes, how they can be found before 1718. I think this is because of the fact that there is no scientific article which is describing the development of the chest of drawers in detail. There are some statements mentioned in the publications, but they can differ from each other tremendously. And if you want to get a clue about the development of the chest of drawers, you have to refer to all the different kind of publications, as I have mentioned some of them in the brief summary as the examples of the overviews of historical furniture by Otto Feuerner from 1927, the dictionary by John Guag from 1952, or the typology by Britta Gould from 2005. With their statements in these from the other publications, it is possible to get a clue about the established doctrine about the development of the chest of drawers, which is nearly the same from the beginning of the scientific examination of historical furniture from the early 20th century up to nowadays. So far, it can be summarized that the earliest pieces of furniture which can be connected with the term chest of drawers are the Italian cassettoni from around 1600. Then there is a description in the inventories of Mid-Essex from 16. 73, this furniture could maybe have looked like these kinds of chest of drawers, which are kept in the collection of the V&A Museum and which are dated to 1653 and 1660 to 1680, and which are originated in England. 
The front of the left furniture here is dominated by the drawers, while the lower part of the furniture on the right is made like a cupboard, and the doors are hiding the drawers. So this furniture looks like a mix between a cupboard and a chest of drawers. One example, which is always shown as one of the earliest examples from France, is this chest of drawers made in Paris, and which is dated to 1700 uh, up to 1720. Besides the high quality of its surface, the construction is the same as the early Italian examples. It stands on short feet and it has two half length drawers at the top and two long drawers um, down below. And the plate on top protrudes over the body of the furniture on three sides. So far, this is the history of the development of the chest of drawers as it can be traced in the scientific literature and in connection with the survived examples. But you may remember that Adolf Feuner mentioned also that in the late Gothic period in Germany, furniture had been, which he connected with the term commode chest of drawers. Such a furniture is the box with drawers, which is attributed to Master Ulrich Auer and which is dated to 1458. Feuner says that this kind of furniture is the original type, the archetype of the later chest of drawers. So it becomes clear that this early kind of furniture with drawers, also as the example of the chest with drawers in the Southwark Cathedral, are just representing a step in the development to the chest of drawers. Unfortunately, this box with drawers is lost since 1945, but it belonged to the inventory of the castle of Pappenheim in Southern Germany which is around about 17 kilometers far from Nuremberg. And now we come to the point where Max Planck's statement from the beginning of my lecture comes into play and what the seemingly causally wrong thing is and what enriches science with new ideas and here in particular, the science of historical furniture and even more specifically the history of the development of the chest of drawers. It was at one day when I was dealing with depictions of furniture on late medieval paintings when I stumbled over the so-called Augustiner altarpiece. The altarpiece, which is now kept in the Germanisches Nationalmuseum in Nuremberg, was originally the high altar of the Augustiner Cloister Church St. Vitus in Nuremberg, and is an altarpiece with in total three pairs of wings, which are painted on both sides. The center part is lost, but it is reconstructed with sculptures. The altarpiece is dated by inscription to 1487, and it is attributed to the workshop of the master of the Augustine altarpiece, which can be, uh, which can maybe be identified with Hans Traut, and also the hand by Wilhelm Früh of the elder can be recognized. So when the wings are closed, you can see scenes of the life in the martyrdom of St. Vitus, and in the first opening, there are eight full figure sands on display. From the left to the right, you can see the sands Dorothea and Margaret, John the Baptist and Nicholas, Catherine and Barbara, and George and Sebald. The views on the wings of the feast day opening show two scenes, each with the saints Bernard of Clairvaux, Christophorus, Luke, and Sebastian. And it was the upper section of the left wing where St. Luke is depicted while he is painting the Virgin, which caught my attention. You can see inside a house with two rooms and St. Luke is shown in the right room, sitting on a small bench or a stool in front of an easel while he is painting a depiction of the Virgin with child. This heavenly appearance is situated in the room on the left side and it's separated from Luke through a doorway with two little steps. The Virgin sits under a window in front of a fireplace on a red pillow on a wooden chair, carrying the infant Jesus who is standing on her legs. Even if it is a heavenly appearance, the whole scene is situated in a real earthly environment. The room with the wooden ceiling, the tiled floor and the fireplace correspond to the contemporary late medieval interior. Everything is depicted in detail, also the furniture. The chair of the Virgin cannot be seen in its entirety, but the painter gives a real detailed depiction of it, so that the construction of it, with, uh, so that the construction of it with its legs connected with turned stretchers, 
can be retraced very well. The shape and design of the legs, or better, the left back leg, which can be seen, is rectangular in cross section. The edges are provided with a concave groove, which is interrupted in the parts where the stretchers are joining the leg to have the full strength of the material for a strong connection. The shoulder board of the backrest is connected to the upright support with a mortise and tenon joining and, addition, and additionally secured by a wooden double. A pressed and calf knob forms the upper end of the leg. Even the grain of the wood can be seen. That, detail, uh, that kind of a detailed depiction can also be seen at the small bench where Luke is sitting on it with its architectural elements as an Augie arc and a trefoil and step jams. The tripod easel is adjustable in its height via two pins, which can be put in specified openings of the both front upright supports of the easel. They are connected with three rectangular stretchers with a mortise and tenon joining. The lower end of the left front support presents at its outer edges a concave groove. At the inner edges of the right support, these concave grooves run over the whole length. Only in the section where the stretchers are connected with the upright supports, the concave groove is interrupted as we have seen it already at the chair. The upper ends of the supports also present a knob as we can see it on the right one. The rear movable support has also a concave groove. At the edges, only a small lower part is not formed like that. And even we do not see much of the next furniture, with, which is also depicted on the altarpiece, the painter reproduces it also in detail as the other furniture we have uh, looked at so far. It is the furniture behind the easel, and it is the furniture which it is all about. And you may be also astonished as I was when I recognized it for the first time is a storage furniture with drawers and although the furniture is situated along the wall which separates the two rooms its total length cannot be seen the height reaches nearly the parapet of the window opening and so it could be determined with mid high the texture of the boards is depicted as well as the joining with dovetails at the edges of the boards at the back and at the front the furniture is standing on its sideboards the lower ends on the side and also on the front of the furniture um, are designed in the shape of a flat arc, a so-called bracket. The corpus of the furniture is partitioned into two sections. The lower part is about two thirds of the full height and has two drawers which are separated from each other with a traverse. The upper part of the furniture is about one third of the height and protrudes on three sides over the lower part of the furniture. If the additionally plate on top also protrudes over three sides cannot be seen, but it can clearly be seen that it protrudes at least at one side. If the upper part contains a drawer can also not be seen, but it seems to be the only logical consequence in response to the rest of the furniture because of the height of the upper part, uh, because the height of the upper part corresponds to the height of one drawer in the lower part. Also, it can be assumed that in relation to the height, the width of the drawers could maybe correspond to the width of the whole furniture. Accordingly, it seems that the painter depicted an independent standalone storage furniture with probably three drawers, which the length has the size of the width of the furniture. Due to the detailed depiction of the material, as well as the types of wood joints and the design details of all the furniture, it can be assumed that the painter reproduced originals or at least orientated himself on them. That the painter or at, uh, that the painter depicted or at least oriented himself at originals shows another part of the Augustino altarpiece. On the wing with the depiction of St. Vitus, who is surrounded by, the li by lines, you can see a castle in the background. Georg Ulrich Grossmann, the former director of the Germanisches Nationalmuseum and vice chairman of the Warburg Society for the Research of Castles and Palaces, identified this castle as the depiction of the Episcopal Castle in Trento because of the eight windows with arcades, a detail which still can be identified today and which has been erected in 1475. 
the interior, the studio where St. Luke is painting seemed to be a, a depiction of a typical artist studio of that time. A study by Daniel Hess and Thomas Ezer from 2007 about late medieval artist studios and their depictions comes to the conclusion that such depictions also like that ones as on the Augustina altarpiece are illustrations of the circumstances wherein the painters have worked and that these depictions are very similar to the contemporary written sources, sources which describe the studios. Therefore, the painter was not only really up to date with the architectural depictions like the castle of Trento or with the typical kind of an artist's studio when he painted the Augustina altarpiece in 1487, but also with the furniture. More than 100 years before the established and scientific doctrine says that the shape of the chest of drawer has been perfected with usually three long drawers, and more than 200 years before some researcher expected the chest of drawers in Germany, it seems that the painter furnished the studio of St. Luke with the new style of a storage furniture with a chest of drawers. And there is one thing that is really remarkable and, in my opinion, it underlines the thesis that the painter used and depicted the new style of a storage furniture with a state of the art, or let me say it in a modern, more modern way, that he depicted the contemporary it piece of furniture. This is the fact that he depicted the furniture with an open drawer. The furniture is standing behind the easel and it is covered by it almost in total. So it is difficult for the viewer to recognize the furniture. And we see no handles which may help to identify the drawer if it would have been depicted closed. In my opinion, it is not a negligence by St. Luke that he has left open the drawer. I think it was by the intention of the painter to show the newest innovation in furniture making of the late medieval period, the drawer. The same phenomenon can be seen on the wing with the depiction of the miracles of the roses of St. Elizabeth at the intercessor altar of the Collegiate and Parish Church in Laufen in Bavaria, which is dated to 1495 and 50, uh, 1505. There we can see a kind of a storage furniture standing in front of the bed, but in comparison to the furniture onto the Augustina altarpiece, this furniture cannot be defined precisely. We see a box which is made out of boards and the lower ends of the sideboards chosen of the arc. At the front in the lower section, a drawer stands a little open and you can see that the boards of the drawers have been made mitred and joined with dovetails. The drawer has no handlings. Above the drawer, there is a traverse. Above this traverse, you can see a field which is surrounded by a thin shadow of a gap which seems to give a hint that this section of the furniture also contains a drawer. For comparison, uh, I show you the drawer of my kitchen cupboard, and there you can see also the shadow of the gap around the drawer. But as we can see at the intercessor altarpiece, the unspecified closed drawer or just the board doesn't have handling, so it isn't really clear if it could be a drawer or not. Also, it is not clear if the board on top of the box, which is made out of a frame with a panel, is a lid or not. No hinges can be seen or even a lock, which would make an interpretation as a lid more plausible. So, in this case, if it's not clear which kind of storage furniture the painter depicted, is it a chest with drawer, like this example from France, which is dated to the second half of the 15th century? The difference here is that the field above the drawer doesn't show a thin shadow of a gap. And you can see clearly that uh, the hinges at the lid. So that could make it possible that the furniture onto the intercessor altar could be a kind of a chest of drawer. But in comparison to the furniture on the Augustine altar piece, it becomes clear that the painter of the intercessor altar didn't depict the furniture so much in detail that it can be specified precisely. That shows by implication how precisely the painter of the Augustina altarpiece depicted his furniture. He clearly wanted to show this special kind of furniture, chest of drawers, and he opens the drawer to show the newest invention in furniture making. When I started my research about the chest of drawers and showed this depiction of the furniture to some furniture experts and told them my conviction that a chest of drawer is depicted, one of the comments was 
that the chest of drawers may have been added later. This assumption can be denied by two facts. The first one is that it would have been very difficult to add uh, this furniture and the painting behind the easel later in time. The second one is the X-ray photography, which shows that the furniture is part of the original color layer. And as you can see at the detail of the open drawer below, the primary intention of the painter was to draw the garment of Saint Luke a bit, a bit bigger as it is now. During the painting process, he recognizes that the open drawer would have been covered by the garment and he decided to shorten it so that the open drawer can be seen. For me, that is also an indication that the painter wanted to show the open drawer explicitly. And that brings us to the question about the emergence of drawers in the history of furniture, their production and use. What is surely the most important step for the development towards a chest of drawers and what also can answer the question if the painter really shows the newest invention in furniture making or not, and if it could be a chest of drawers or could it also be another type of furniture with drawers. Heinrich Kreisel says, quote, an ingenious invention of the carpenters in the late Gothic period was the drawer. It certainly found its first application in sacristy furniture for the storage of casubles, end of the quote. Here I show you a complete but a bit later example of such a sacristy cupboard, which is dated by inscription to 1539 and which is formally kept in the Castle Museum in Berlin. You can see that these kinds of cupboards consist of two main parts, the upper part with doors and the lower part with the long drawers. The two parts are separated from each other through a small belt similar compartment, which also contains drawers. A lot of those underparts uh, of sacristy cupboards have survived and have later been used as an independent alone standing piece of furniture, as you can see at the example from Austria from the second half of the 15th century. I want to quote Heinrich Kreisel again. He says, quote, by removing, by removing the top, they have sometimes been transformed into a chest of drawers a type of furniture that didn't even exist in the late Gothic period, end of the quote. Could it be possible that on the Augustina altarpiece, such an underpart of a sacristy cupboard is depicted? When you compare both furniture, you see easily how different they are. The most intrigued difference is the design of the upper section. At the, uh, at the furniture on the Augustina altarpiece, the upper section protrudes on three sides over the lower section of the furniture and the plate on top also protrudes over the corpus. The under part of the sacristy cupboard isn't designed like that. The corpus is flush because a belt similar compartment which connected the lower part with the now lost upper part had to be put over it. That is not possible at the furniture on the Augustino altarpiece and so it becomes clear that this is not an under part of a sacristy cupboard. Another early example of a furniture with drawers, which is dated to the 15th century and which may come from France, is the so-called chest of drawers or vestments in the Metropolitan Museum, the Cloisters in New York. That furniture is an independent, alone standing piece of furniture and doesn't seem to be an underpart of a sacristy cupboard. But the shape is also different from uh, is also different to the furniture of the Augustina altarpiece. Early types of furniture with drawers can also be found in Italy. Here I show you an example which is dated to 1475 and which has been published in the publication by Wilhelm Bode about the Italian house furniture of the Renaissance from 1902. He describes it as a condenser with drawers, which in his opinion is the precursor of the chest of drawers. But you have to be careful with Italian pieces which are connected to Wilhelm Bode because he was a great collector of such things for the German market at that time, and not every piece he imported from Italy was an original one. Early chests with drawers can be found in Austria. Here is one typical example from the region nearby Salzburg, which is dated to the end of the 15th century. It shows the same construction style as the chest with drawers in the south of cathedral we have seen at the beginning, but this chest here is dated much earlier. 
This archive cupboard from Rod's Love with 64 symmetrical drawers was formerly a shelf, which has been removed from a niche in the wall and has been transformed in, uh, to an independent alone standing cupboard in 1455, as it is said in the inscription on top of the cupboard. This transformation from a shelf to a cupboard with drawers in 1455 shows that the invention and establishing of drawers in furniture making took place in the first half of the 15th century. One impressive piece of furniture which support the thesis that drawers have been invented and established in the first half of the 15th century is the pay table of the abbot Rudolf Wolfinger of the Cistercian Abbey in Wettingen, which is dated to, the four, uh, to 1436. It is the oldest preserved furniture with drawers in Switzerland as it is known so far. And in this context, I want to remember you again to the box with drawers from the castle in Pappenheim nearby Nuremberg from 1458. As a last example, and we have already seen it um, before, as a last example, I also want to show you one from book illumination, which has been made by Jean Le Tavernier and that shows the author and copyist Jean Mielou in the scriptorium from 1456. In the background, you can see that kind of storage furniture with a mixed, which is a mixture between a cupboard with a book rest and with two huge drawers. This example is very interesting because here you can see also details of the construction with the drawer runners and the therefore needed cutout at the front board of the furniture. When I'm talking about the thesis that drawers are an invention of medieval furniture making, I also want to point out that it is clear that drawers seem to have existed even in antiquity as some depicted examples suggest. And I just want to show you quickly two examples. At first, the painting by Esteas onto a uh, Celtic Croatia from around uh, 350, 40 BC, that shows a phylax scene where a miser is robbed inside his house. The miser was sleeping on his money chest to protect his money and the two robbers tried to pull him off. It looks like that this chest has a drawer with two handlings in the upper section. The second example dates to the middle of the first century AD and it is, and it is the grave altar in memory of Lucius Cornelius Atimetus, which shows a cutler with his shop. The box or chest shows clearly a drawer in the upper section with a ring to pull to open the drawer. But as we all know, technology knowledge and also furniture making knowledge has almost gone lost in Europe after the collapse of the Roman Empire. So I think it is not wrong to say that the knowledge of the drawers came back and that they can be called an invention in furniture making of the late medieval period. Up to now, we have had a brief look at the invention of drawers and also at late medieval preserved furniture with drawers and late medieval depictions of furniture with drawers to find out if it could be possible that at the Augustine altarpiece from 1487, a chest of drawers is shown. The only thing which is now still missing are the written sources. And I want to make it short. The contemporary written sources don't give an undoubtedly hint that the chest of drawers have been established in the late medieval period because we do not know the term for chest of drawers in that time. So we have to look at general descriptions of furniture with drawers. And even it is really a bit difficult to translate the German and much more the late medieval German terms into English. I want to try to give you a short, but hopefully understandable overview. Besides the inventories as contemporary written sources, the masterpiece regulations of the guilds are good sources too. Um, because in them, the furniture which have to be made to become a master are described a bit more in detail as it is usually in inventories. And to become a master, the masterpiece have to contain the newest inventions in furniture making. But unfortunately, unfortunately, it is not as easy as it seems to be because the terms in the masterpiece regulations differ from region to region and during the time. So it isn't always clear what it is meant. For examples, the drawers are called in German Schublade or shortened just Lade. 
the small storage compartments which you can find inside the chest, which are called in English till boxes, are called in German also Lade. So it can be difficult in German to distinguish these terms and to know what is meant. In one of the earliest preserved masterpiece regulations of the cabinet maker guilds in Munich from 1427, it is said that a chest with a lead line has to be made. That seemed to be a chest with a till box. Then in 1508, this regulation has been renewed and then it is said that a chest with a lade Schirr and Briefachen inneren Laden has to be made. So it is the question what is meant with the term Laden Schirr and Driefachen inneren Laden. The term Driefachen inneren Laden could be understood in that way that a chest with three drawers could have been meant like the chest in Nuremberg with the three drawers in the lower section. Or it also could be a chest with three till boxes, as it can be seen at the chest at St. Mary Magdalene in Oxford. And here I want to thank Chris uh, for the photography and the translation of the term. The term Ladekschir may could be translated to draws because in another masterpiece regulation in Augsburg from 1519, it is said that the cupboard with a belt like uh, compartment in the middle section with a Ladek shear has to be made. That, with no doubt, can only refer to drawers. However, it becomes clear that the written sources give no really clear proofs about the innovation and establishing of drawers in furniture making in the 15th century. Only the preserved furniture and depicted ones do so. And also, the chest of drawers cannot be found in written sources in Germany in that time. That the chest of drawer is uh, that the chest of drawer in its classical form has been existed in South Germany at the end of the 15th century seems to be really possible as it is shown not only in the depiction at the Augustina altarpiece, but also due to all the other early furniture with drawers in that time. In my opinion, it became clear that the chest of drawer is not get didn't get his final form form in France in the 18th century but way before. And as I said at the beginning of this lecture, you don't have to think cautiously wrong things to enrich the history of furniture. It is enough to follow the indications and therefore it seems no longer quest, no, it seems no longer the question if the chest of drawers has been established in the late Middle Ages and if a new chapter can be added to the story of the development of the chest of drawers, the answer is yes, it can. So thank you for listening. Well, thank you very much indeed, uh, uh, Jens. Uh, I think you've certainly introduced a new idea and we, we shall remember your, your lecture forever because of that. Uh, right, uh, we've got two papers then to have questions on. So I don't know whether, uh, let's have a look in the chat list uh, to see what we've got. Uh, Johann van Katzenelbogen has raised the question about uh, the dovetail joints uh, showing in one of your uh, pictures in the painting, uh, which she says were technically impossible. And on the other hand, you clearly show drawers in that painting. So how do you interpret the dovetails that uh, were not possible? Um, you mean that they are not so um, detailed and um, in, um, I try to go back just a second. Um, it, it's in the uh, altarpiece. Yes. yes, yes. So you mean it's a difference between um, the detailed depiction of the whole furniture and the details of the joinings? Can mm -hmm. I interrupt the make the comment myself? Yeah. Yes. So my point was not that the dovetail is not uh, technically possible, but my point was that this painting is showing not necessarily clearly a photograph of, a, of an object, but rather the notion of the object, because if it was photographically realistic, that dovetail could not be in that position. 
Yes. It's not to say that the dovetail is not part of the construction. It just can't be in the middle of the area where the drawer is. So we cannot interpret this. Um, we cannot interpret this painting as being photographic like we would and showing all exact precise details. But rather, what my point was is he's just showing the general idea uh, and the details were meant to show his virtuosity as a painter as opposed to exactly 100% precision of, of an actual piece of furniture. Yes, but I think he depicts an uh, actual piece of furniture because if he did not, he was able to look into the future. No, I'm not. I'm not arguing about the drawer at all because I agree, and actually, I've I've come to the same conclusion you have before. And also, there are actually a couple of paintings that I would like to share with you, which are from the 14th century, which also depict um, a drawer. I'm not arguing about the drawer. Mm -hmm. My point was only that we cannot interpret this painting to be, even though it shows all the wood grain and the detail and so forth, we cannot interpret this as being a photograph of an object because he's more interested in capturing specific details here and there. Uh, like for example, the fact that it has dovetails, the fact that it has wood grain because he wants to show wood. It, he's not capturing as our modern sense of a picture of that exact precise object. I'm not arguing at all about the drawers. Very much, I, I applaud you and your research and it's good to, uh, that people bring up this point because too long it's been thought that it didn't exist and I totally agree with you. There's also from the Hausbuchmeister, um, you, I'm sure you're familiar with that. Um, there's also a picture from 18, uh, 1434 or something around there where one chest of drawer has the, uh, a drawer in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Gens, can you hear me? Yes. Um, uh, just to point out that English customs accounts from the early 15th century uh, have uh, let, they, they uh, detail importation of furniture from the continent, from European continent. Mm -hmm. These include joined chests on the one hand, and also more mysteriously, uh, objects called nests of chests mm -hmm. now this is this is sort of uh, this suggests to me that there, this is a, an english english description for an early type of um, chest of drawers yeah nests mm -hmm. of chests mm -hmm. uh, from both from uh, the netherlands and also from the baltic yes okay thank you uh, there's a question from Nick Humphrey about the Greek vase, where you show the drawer just below the top. <clears throat> and Nick says, is, <clears throat> are the drawer knobs not actually on a fixed board <clears throat> where they, <clears throat> they would be used to tie off a cord holding the lid in place, as in some Egyptian pieces? Once again, I didn't get it so clear. It's a question of whether the what looked like a knob on the drawer. A knob? Actually, a knob. Yes. To, hold, to open the drawer. Uh, was that actually a knob or was it a fixed uh, board which was used to uh, tie off uh, something on top? <clears throat> we can have a closer look. So Perhaps, Nick, you could speak if, if you... Yes. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, if you can pull up, yes. So what what looked like two round <coughs> draw, draw knobs or handles? Yes. Um, I I just wonder, and I have a, a only a, a vague recollection of some ancient Egyptian furniture, but there is a a, a, a fixed knob in these positions, and and they're used. Um, as tying off points for a cord that that runs over the top of the lid. Yes. Okay. It's a it's a way of holding the lid in place without yeah. without hinges. Basically, I I wonder whether that may be what we're seeing here. But um, uh, I think probably there will be plenty of other questions closer to your your um, altarpiece chest. And congratulations on your research and paper. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yes. Um, 
perhaps I could also say, as I'm on the microphone, that when there are references to nests of chests, I have understood that to mean uh, a large chest holding a medium sized chest, holding a smaller chest, holding a, another box so that there would be a, a series of boxes in descending sizes. For example, Hello? Gavin, we can't see your head, by the way. I'm trying, I'm trying to reply to that, to, to Nick's uh, comments there. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can't see you. We can't see me. Well, I don't, I don't know what, you, what I can do about that. Um, uh, anyway, uh, if, if you couldn't hear me, I can put, put a brief, brief comment, but... Uh, no, go ahead. Well, the comment is that um, Nick Nick puts forward a hypothesis. Okay, give some examples. There aren't any examples that I know of. Nest, um, nest of chest equals chest of drawers seems to me to be the best option. Um, I'm I'm very happy to I can I can dig out. Uh, some of the references, but but exactly what's referred to um, would would remain uncertain. So so it needs further uh, consideration, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Martin has made a comment uh, to Johan. It looks as if the front may have a style like end piece that would allow dovetails to the board. So this is going back to the painting. We were talking about a moment ago. Mm. Pardon, I didn't didn't understand it. Can you... Martin, Martin do, do you want to? Uh, yeah, just it? just briefly, if I can. It, it, just going back to that painting, it, I, I don't see the problem with the dovetails. It looked to me as if that end piece. In fact, with the painting that's on the screen at the moment of that vase. That sort of far left hand side there has like a, a style arrangement end and it looked to me as if that uh, painting could show something similar. Uh, where, you, where you've got a plank that um, in line with the end of the drawer, the uh, it could be a, a, a sort of a, a vertical style, which then would allow the dovetails into a, a sideboard there. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't think it's worth getting too detailed in this, but it's just a comment. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, the comment from Jeremy Rycroft about the term chest of drawers. Uh, early drawers seem to be for storing small possessions, tools or money, which develops by storage of church vestments to later clothing storage, gradually replacing the domestic chest. So that's uh, an idea about the evolution of uh, drawers. Mm. Um, it's... I think it's, it's the idea that the that drawers were a response to a demand for a particular sort of function of things to be stored. Uh, and as they got bigger and more numerous, so the chest of drawers developed. Yeah, um, I think we had already seen the depiction by um, um, John Le Tavernier where uh, big things <laughs> are stored in the drawers, like the big books. And um, so maybe, so I don't know why the drawers have been um, established in that time because they have to uh, put little things or big things in it. And um, yeah, I don't know exactly. And I don't know if this was the answer. <laughs> it's a bit different to understand you, Chris. Jeremy, uh, do you want to say anything else about that or? No. no. Okay, are there any oh, other yeah, questions? Yeah, just any okay. yeah I, it seemed to me that we saw some evidence in the church cupboards um, and in these ones where tools and books and other things. So it, it, the drawer existed, 
but it was for it was a kind of piece of technical uh, storage, mm -hmm. and it wasn't seen as something in ordinary households for furniture for clothing storage. Yes. And all I'm saying is that the development shown Chester Resorts results from the adoption of the early, quite well established drawer technology mm -hmm. to domestic uh, clothing storage. Mm -hmm. uh, although it may have been used for church storage earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's developed in scope and size and gradually found a new application. So the chest of drawers is a term relating to a new application, not to the invention of the drawer. Yes, but um, we also have to look when the drawer comes up in furniture making. And um, as I try to show, these are the earliest examples or the earliest examples are from the beginning of the 15th century. And um, so this uh, goes together and um, yeah, maybe there were older examples which, are, uh, which didn't survive and we do not know. But um, uh, at now at the point it seems that uh, the drawer came back maybe when it was uh, already has been in, in, made in, in antiquity or something. Um, came back to the late medieval period uh, and yeah, has been uh, put into furnitures like the chests and uh, so on. <coughs> the chest of drawer that couldn't be uh, made. Yeah, uh, <laughs> maybe like this. Mm. Well, um, is there another question or shall we break for lunch now? Okay, I suggest we, we break for lunch. So well, thank you very much indeed, Jens. Uh, this is a very memorable paper.